Okay, so I don't know about you, but there have been some pretty heavy topics, you know, with that almost going to nuclear war thing with the Cuban Missile Crisis. So we're going to pause here for a second uh, and take a look at a fun topic, kind of a cultural one. It's the Beatles with the uh, British invasion. Now, this does make me a little sad because if we were in school today, uh, we would be having an all Beatles uh, version of karaoke. We might even extend that a little bit. Uh, and uh, be having a little bit of fun with that. So, uh, I tell you what, if you've got Beatles Rock Band, I want you to stop what you're doing, pause this video. Uh, I want you to go out, dust off the Xbox 360, load that thing up, uh, and uh, do a song for me. Uh, if you tape yourself doing it, send it my way. Uh, I'll even give you some extra credit if you've got that one. So, uh, we're going to look, though, just real quickly at the Beatles. Um, this is the... Uh, this is one of those topics where there are going to be several videos uh, that I'm going to post after these notes on the playlist. Uh, a lot of stuff I would be showing you um, and, and have dropped in here, but uh, don't want to get in trouble with the YouTube police. So uh, the Beatles are a 1960s rock band. They lead what becomes known in the 1960s as the British Invasion uh, of the United States. Now, last time the British invaded, that didn't work out real well for us, right? You remember the War of 1812? This is a fun British invasion, so they're going to send over uh, a lot of pop bands uh, that are going to come over. So you get uh, the Who and uh, the Rolling Stones, but the, the biggest is the, the Beatles. These four guys uh, make up uh, the Beatles. The guy on the far left is Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney is still alive today, uh, still uh, doing concerts. Uh, Amanda and I took our moms uh, several years ago to uh, see Paul McCartney. Uh, he was in his 70s then, did a three and a half hour set, dancing pyrotechnics, played the entire time, and it was uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, so he is still uh, very much around. Uh, the guy next to him is a guy named John Lennon. Uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney wrote uh, a lot of the songs that the Beatles sang. John Lennon was tragically killed. Uh, in the 1980s in New York City, uh, he uh, he was shot by a deranged, quote-unquote, fan. Uh, if you go to uh, New York City in Central Park, across from where his apartment was, uh, there's a section named Strawberry Fields after one of the Beatles songs, uh, and, uh, and there's a memorial there to him. Uh, Ringo Starr is the next guy. Uh, they're the luckiest man in show business. Uh, the Beatles, uh, actually, Ringo Starr wasn't their original drummer. It was a guy named Pete Best. Uh, and Pete Best apparently wasn't um, as good as the other guys thought he should be, uh, and so they replaced him uh, really right before they hit it big with uh, with Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr is still alive today uh, as well. Uh, the guy on the far right there is George Harrison, lead guitarist for the Beatles, uh, fantastic guitarist. Uh, he uh, he passed away several years ago from uh, from cancer. Uh, I'll, I'll link the video to you just of some of their songs uh, but uh, he uh, he had one called While My Guitar Gently Weeps uh, and a tribute concert to him uh, Prince uh, just absolutely did an amazing version uh, of uh, the guitar solo from While My Guitar Gently Weeps uh, the, the Beatles were from the city of Liverpool, England uh, when uh, when they were uh, coming up, they were playing in nightclubs. They went over to uh, to Germany and played for a while. There's a guy named Malcolm Gladwell uh, that wrote a book uh, talking about how you become an expert at something. And, and basically said it takes 10,000 hours uh, to become an expert at something. Well, uh, one of the examples he used in that book, I remember, was the Beatles and uh, and talking about these, these concerts and they give, uh, you know, play... Uh, several times a day, uh, a couple hours at a time at these places in Germany, uh, and just how the, the practice and things really uh, helped them. Um, they were, by the time the 60s were around, very hip. Uh, they had longer hair, which was a difference in uh, the style in the United States in the 50s. Uh, they wore the black suits, skinny ties. Uh, they had what were called Beatles boots. Uh, my dad, Papa Bagwell, will tell you that uh, that's one of the only things he ever wanted uh, Fashion-wise, that uh, my grandma said no uh, on, uh, she wouldn't let him get uh, get a pair of Beatles boots. Um, the uh, they are going to come to the United States February 9th of 1964. I told you the era of the 60s is usually considered to be 
1963 to 1975, the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, and there are people that will tell you that that started with the Kennedy assassination, November 22nd, 1963. Uh, there are also people that will tell you it started February 9th, 1964, when the Beatles appear for the first time uh, on Ed Sullivan's TV show. Uh, Ed Sullivan uh, was a nighttime host like a Jimmy Fallon or uh, Stephen Colbert would be today. Uh, actually, I think Stephen Colbert's show is actually done from the Ed Sullivan Theater. He took over for a guy named Dave Letterman uh, that uh, that came from there. Uh, but very much in, in that kind of mold. So they'd have different musical acts and interviews and things. Uh, and so it was a big deal when the Beatles came over and appeared on Ed Sullivan. My mom was a uh, young girl at this time and talked about sitting in front of the TV screaming her head off. Uh, she and my Aunt Dixie when the, uh, when the Beatles came on television. Um, their manager had waited until they had a number one hit uh, to uh, to bring them over, but by April, uh, four out of the top five songs in the country uh, were Beatles songs. So you know how hard it is to get a song uh, on the song charts. Four out of the top five uh, were these guys. Uh, they have a couple of different phases of their career. One's kind of a pop uh, music, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Love Me Do, uh, things like that. Uh, mark uh, a lot of their early careers. They do some famous covers. Uh, on their albums uh, and then there's a shift uh, and the Beatles get a little more psychedelic uh, as the decade goes on uh, you see the cover here from the famous album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band uh, a lot of people uh, put some of the psychedelicness on experimentation with drugs uh, one of the stories I've heard a famous singer from the 60's named Bob Dylan uh, who you'll see when we talk about folk music uh, introduced or supposedly introduced the Beatles to uh, marijuana. Uh, the equipment uh, that people used to do concerts back then wasn't as good uh, and so one of the things the Beatles noticed was very frustrating to them is when they would come out to give a concert their fans would just basically scream the whole time they were on stage and, and couldn't hear them singing playing the instruments uh, and so they made the decision they weren't going to tour anymore they were going to do albums uh, but they didn't feel like it was doing anybody any good uh, for them to uh, to get out on the road. Uh, and so you see the second phase where you're going to see uh, some some different uh, types of songs. The, the lyrics uh, get a little odder and, and a little uh, harder to navigate, those sorts of things, uh, as they're going to, uh, going to, uh, to be doing that. Um, in uh, late 60s, early 70s, the Beatles will break up. That's right, they're not uh, a band that was known here in the United States for very long. Uh, one of the ladies that gets the um, the blame for that is the, the lady here on the left. That's John Lennon on the right. You can see he uh, got a little psychedelic with him as image too. But that's Yoko Ono. Uh, she's the one that uh, is given the blame for, for driving a wedge between John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Uh, you hear all kinds of stories with uh, with things like that, um, but um, the Beatles will break up. Uh, they'll go on to other things. John Lennon has a very famous song called "Imagine" uh, in his solo career that you're probably familiar with. Uh, Paul McCartney's in a band called Wings. Does a really famous uh, James Bond theme song. Uh, Ringo, as we calls an all star band, uh, he'd go around and, and grab members of other bands and, and they would uh, form kind of super bands. Uh, George Harrison goes out on his own. And, uh, and, and like I said, there's, uh, you know, John Lennon's the first one to pass away. There's never any kind of reunion tour or anything with the Beatles. But I remember when I was younger, they uh, re-released uh, an album called Beatles Number Ones. Uh, it was all their number one songs. It was 40 or 50 songs uh, on a set of CDs and really got people interested in uh, their music again. Uh, there's another big spike in interest. Their company had been the Apple Recording Company, and so they'd had uh, some problems with Apple computers and obviously iTunes, and so that was a big deal. I remember when uh, the Beatles got to be on um, got to be on iTunes. But uh, you look back, and one of the things people notice about the 1960s is the music. Uh, and when it comes to the music, it's pretty much the Beatles and and then everybody else. Uh, it doesn't matter who you're your favorite band was from the 60s. Uh, the Beatles were kind of head and shoulders uh, above everybody else, just as kind of a cultural uh, phenomenon. But like I said, I'm going to put some videos after this set, uh, and you can take a look um, at, uh, at what those guys were up to. <laughs> 